Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you an easy way to create sparks in Blender, so let's get started. First delete everything and add a sphere. A UV sphere I mean. Now I duplicate it and move it over as shift Z to scale it on the X and Y axis like this. And now go up here and hide it in the render. If you don't see this option, just go up here and enable it. Now let's select the other sphere, go to the particle properties and press plus. Now let's go to render and change it from halo to object. Select the sphere that we created, sphere 001. Now set the number to 10,000 and the end frame to 250 and the live frame lifetime to 10. Now if we press play we have something like this. Go to rotation and check and set it to global X or whichever axis you want and set the face to round here. Now go to velocity and set it to something like this and for the X set it to somewhere around here. I think I'll change the face to this value to around minus 5 or minus 6. Now for the randomized face let's set that to somewhere around 0.2. Now that is all that we need to do for the particles. You can bake the cache if you like but it's not necessary. You can do that up here and bake now let's go to render and uncheck show emitter so that the sphere won't be rendered and add a camera, shift A camera, control alt 0 to go into camera view. Now go to rendered view and change it from cyclist to EV and enable ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections and motion blur. Now go to the world properties and set the color to black. Go to rendered view and let's select the sphere, the duplicated one and create a new material. Go to material properties, press new and set it from principal PSTF to emission if I can find it. <laughs> Here it is. Now I set the strength to 10 and now if we play we can see the sparks. So let's disable the overlays for now and select the sphere again. Set the strength to 25 and set the color to something orange like this. One last thing that we need to do for the particle system is to randomize the scale. So go to render and set the scale to 0.2 for example. Oh, that's too much. 0.1. Uh, let's try 0 0.75, 0 0.075 I mean. I think this looks good. Now under the render properties let's set the shutter to 0.1. Otherwise I think the motion blur is too strong as you can see. So let's set it to 0.1. And now this looks much better I think. Now let's go to the output properties and select a folder. I already created one for that. You can create a new folder here. I'm going to call the images render. And if you put an underscore after the name, Blender is going to automatically assign numbers to the frames. So let's hit accept. Make sure the file format is JPEG. I prefer JPEG because uh, the files are a lot smaller. If you want the render to be transparent for example you need to use PNG and also you need to go up here to film and make it transparent but I'm not gonna do that now let's press ctrl s to save and go to render render animation once it's done rendering I'm going to show you how you can compile the images into a video after it has finished rendering you can close this window and go up here to the plus sign and select video editing. Hover over the file location and press Ctrl C. Go back to frame 1 and hit Shift A. 
images sequence. Now I already have the images here because I previously opened it without recording. Now let's go here and paste in the location minus the name, hit enter and here you have the images. Press A, enter and now we have the animation in the video sequencer. Now let's go to output and type in rendered animation for example. You don't have to change the name but I'm gonna do it. Now for the file format select FFmpeg video, set the encoding to MPEG4 and the output quality to high quality. Now again go to render and render animation. By the way you can also press Ctrl F12 to render the animation. So let's click on it. And now it's going to compile the images into a video. Now that it has finished you can close this window again. Go here and right click and open location externally. And now we have the animation here. So that's it with the tutorial. I hope you liked it. Please let me know what I should do next and I'll see you in the next video.